All right, we're going to be covering dotted notes to further our basics of the timing studies. And dots really are just shorthand for ties. It's a way of simplifying the notation so the appearance of it isn't as busy. And they're used quite a bit in formal musical notation. So we're going to be taking a look here at the dotted half note. And what a dot does to any note, it could be in front of a half note, a quarter note, it can be attached to any note value. And all a dot does is make any note value that it's in front of longer by half of itself. Okay, that sounds really confusing. But as we expose this, you'll understand it more. So a dot makes any note value longer by half of itself. And we will see that right now. For any review regarding the timing studies, please consult 1.2 and or 1.2.1, which was the one that previous to this lesson, which thoroughly explained the theory behind ties and how to execute them directly under the, the guitar. So review of that may be necessary as this lesson pretty much follows 1.2.1. In this figure, we have a half note tied to a quarter note. So remember, a half note's two counts. And because it's tied to a quarter note, that means that quarter note sustains. So that half note is tied to a quarter note is going to be a total of three counts. So we would play the note and let it ring out for three counts. Since we're counting to four, I have that extra quarter note, we would pick that count four because it's not tied. And remember the arrows going down and up. The down arrow is the foot down. The up arrow is the foot up in which we tap in time with the click with our foot. So our foot comes down on the click and up on the and when we're counting. And we will execute that right now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we can use a dot to replace that tied quarter note. So if you look at this figure here, a half note is two counts. A half note divided in half, in other words, divided in by two, is the same thing as a quarter note. So a half note, it's two counts, right? Two counts divided by two equals one count, which is, in musical terms, one count for now is a quarter note. So a half note divided by two is the same thing as a quarter note. Or you could look at it as a half note times half equals a quarter, which whichever works for you, it's the same thing. So two times half equals one, half note times half equals quarter note. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Now let's look at figure A only. So when we have a half note and we add half of itself to it, that's the same thing as a half note plus a quarter note. So we have a half note plus a half note divided by two. And we just remember in the previous slide, we just explained that a half note divided by two is a quarter note. So that's why we have the half note plus the quarter note. So a half note plus a half note divided by two, in other words, a half note plus half of itself is the same thing as a half note plus a quarter note. Let's look at figure B. So a half note plus a quarter note it's the same thing as a half note tied to a quarter note, just like we saw in the first example where we played it on the guitar. So that's a total of three counts. It's two counts tied to one count, total of three counts. Now, let's look at figure C. We have the half note and that dot. That dot represents half of itself. In other words, half of the half note. That's what that dot means. So that dot, in this case, is that extra quarter note that's tied. And that dot falls on count three if you look at the arrow pointing to the counting. So instead of writing a half note tied to a quarter note, we can write a half note with a dot after it. Therefore, three counts. Two counts plus one count equals three counts. Two counts plus 
half of itself. In other words, 2 plus 1 equals 3 full counts. So this next playing example will actually sound and be counted and played identically to the first playing example. However, it's written completely differently. So instead of the half note tied to a quarter note with that leftover quarter note on beat four, we're going to have the half note with the dot representing that tied quarter note with the final quarter note on count four. So all there are are the dotted half note and the quarter note. So that dotted half note rings out for three counts. And then since we're counting to four, we have that left over. I just threw in that quarter note on count four just so it can be complete. And go ahead and give it a shot. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, now we will play the first playing example we did earlier and just the last one just so you can hear how they're both the same but notated differently. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Okay, so we're going to look at the dotted quarter note. First thing to understand is that the two eighth notes that we've been seeing have always been beamed together. And when you do not beam two eighth notes, they are split in half with those flags. So a single eighth note is basically has a flag attached to the stem. So that's what two eighth notes look like split up without the beam. Anyway, so um, we also learned that a quarter note is the same thing as two eighth notes tied together. So with that in mind, you can say that a quarter note divided by two equals a single eighth note, or a quarter note times half equals a single eighth note. Looking at figure A, a quarter note plus a quarter note divided by two, in other words, a quarter note plus half of itself, equals a quarter note plus an eighth note, because an eighth note is half of a quarter note. Half of a quarter note is an eighth note. So therefore, a quarter note plus half of itself equals a quarter note plus an eighth note. In figure B, we have that quarter plus an eighth. Equal, and it's the same thing in more musical terminology. It's a quarter note tied to an eighth note. So that's one full count tied to half of a count. So therefore, that in figure C, we see that dot, that's that extra eighth note that's tied to that quarter note. So it would be played as one and two with the and left over. So you can also look at it like this. A quarter note is the same thing as two eighth notes tied together. A dotted quarter note has that extra eighth note. So therefore, you could look at a dotted quarter note as three eighth notes tied together if you wanted to. Okay, so what we'll do now is play the first example without the dot. In other words, we're going to play a quarter note, have it tied to a eighth note. In other words, beat two. We're going to come in on that leftover eighth note on the end of two, and then back down on three. So we'll do that right now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and we will now look at the next example with the dotted quarter note followed by the eighth note on the end of two and then we're playing that half note on count three just to play something so that dotted quarter note rings out for one and two on the end we hit that single eighth note that's left over and then we play that half note on count three letting it ring out for two counts. So first, we'll play the example as if the quarter note is tied to an eighth note, and then we'll play the next example considering the dotted quarter note. And remember, both exercises sound exactly the same. They're played the same. They just appear to be different by virtue of the dotted quarter note being the same thing as a quarter note tied to that single eighth note. One and 
two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and we're going to do a couple other examples with the dotted half note and the dotted quarter note. We're just going to put them at different parts of the beat. So if you look at this first example, we have a quarter note on count one, ringing that over one and because it's a quarter note. Now a quarter note happens in count two, but notice how count two, it's tied to the half note on count three. So remember, a quarter note tied to a half note, that's a total of three counts. So therefore, you're going to pick count two, but it's going to ring out for not only count two, but for count three and also count four. That's a total of three counts. Counts two, three, and four is a total of three counts total. So you're going to pick on count one, pick count two, but that count two is a quarter note that's tied to the half note on count three. So you're going to pick count two and let it ring out all the way through count four. And now we'll look at the next example, which is actually going to sound identical to what I just explained. We have the quarter note on count one. Now on count two, we have that dotted half note, which is a total of three counts. So it doesn't matter if it's a quarter note tied to a half note or a dotted half note. It's still three counts, no matter what. No difference. The only difference is the appearance. So when we pick that dotted half note on count two, it's going to ring out in the counts three and four. In other words, a total of three counts for counts two, three, and four, just like the quarter note that was tied to the half note. Same thing. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and apply both examples. They're going to sound the same, but they're going to appear to be different. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all right now we're going to look at replacing the dotted quarter note on the and of one so to simplify it look at the first example we have two eighth notes on one eighth note falling on one count one, and the other eighth note falling on count and. But notice how the and of one is tied into count two. So think of it like this. You have count two, which is a quarter note. And remember, a quarter note is the same thing as two eighth notes tied. So therefore, that qu quarter note count two rings out in count two and in the and of two from the and of one. So we pick count one. We pick the and of one, but we tie the and of one into count two and also into the and of two because count two is a quarter note. Remember, it rings out over and. So think of that as three eighth notes. Uh, the and of one is one eighth note, and then count two, which is a quarter note, is the other two eighth notes that are tied. So we're going to pick on count one, pick the and of one, let it ring out over two and, and then see on count three, we have that half note. We're going to pick that because why? It does not have a tie attached to it. So we, we're going to pick count three as the half note and let that ring out over counts three and four because a half note's two counts total. Now look at the eighth note with the flag. That's a single eighth note. So we're going to pick that on count one. Because that's a single eighth note, that's over with something has to happen on and. In this case, it's that dotted quarter note, which is the same thing as the previous example is that eighth note tied to a quarter note. So that and with the dotted quarter note, it rings out over and into two and into the and of two. That's three eighth notes total. That dotted quarter note is three eighth notes total. It's the same thing as that eighth note tied to the quarter note, which is also three eighth notes. So we're going to pick on count one, pick the end of one, 
let it ring out on count two, let it ring out over and, and then on count three, we have that half note that we pick on count three, and we let it ring out for two counts. This will all make sense when you hear it and see it notated, and try counting out loud and observing where the accents fall before even playing and internalize it. Eventually, it'll all make sense. The more you practice, the more you do it, and the more you observe. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All right, one last example using the dotted quarter note. In the first example of this, we have a quarter note on count one, so it's going to ring out over one and. It's tied into count two, but just for an eighth note of count two. In other words, it's tied in for just half of count two. And then on the back half of count two, on the end of two, we're going to pick that note. Why? Because there's no tie attached to it. So we're going to pick count one, let it ring out over the end of one, let it ring out into two. We're going to pick the end of two, which is only an eighth note, tied into count three, which is a quarter note, so that's going to ring out over three and. So thinking of it this way, we have a note that rings out over one and two, and then another note that rings out over the and of two, into three, into the and of three, and then we come back in again with our pick on count four. So you can also think of it as that quarter note is two eighth notes, so one and is two eighth notes tied. Count two is tied, so you could think of that as three eighth notes. And the and of two is an eighth note, and then three, the quarter note count three rings out an and, you could think of that as two notes tied, so that's another three eighth notes. So we'll go ahead and play that example, and then we'll follow it with, in other words, that could be two dotted quarter notes following each other. They'll count one and two, that's a dotted quarter note, right? And then and three and, that's also a dotted quarter note because of the th virtue of the three eighth notes tied. Same thing. So let's give it a shot. We'll play the first example. Again, all this makes more sense when you apply it, not just listen to it. And we'll go for it. And then we'll play the real example with the two dotted quarter notes following each other. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all right now we're going to review each one of the rhythms that have already been previously demonstrated and explained they are going to be back to back with no break so if you need to pause the video between each one or during each one, just do whatever works for you as far as trying to comprehend this. Everybody has a different way of doing things and find your own way to internalize this information with these suggestions and whatever comes to your mind. In this time, only the notation will appear as the video examples of me doing it have already been done. So with that said, as in the previous rhythmic notation exercises, we need to do the four things at once. You want to be tapping your foot, counting, playing, and reading the notation at the same time. Try not to look at the guitar neck. Don't look at your picking hand. Just those four things at once, tapping, counting, playing, and reading. That's what's going to happen in this lesson, and you will greatly benefit from it. Try not to do any shortcuts. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and here are two other examples which we actually did not cover but we did cover the exact rhythms and the way to count them so first try counting out loud while I'm doing the playing example and look at how each of the rhythms falls on the count number and where the foot tap is. So tap your foot and count. Don't play. Just read. Then try to do everything at once. Count, tap the foot, read, and play. So remember the four things at once that we did. And pretty much this will help you learn to teach yourself rather than having everything spoon-fed and make you a much better musician that's able to understand new information and execute it more quickly. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and Before moving on to any other lesson, I highly recommend going to the next timing lessons, 1.2.3 and 1.2.4, which deals with the concept of rests and also meter. Very, very core timing theory concepts to learn, which will again, make the execution and understanding of playing something more accurate and usually with faster results.